everyone and welcome to uh, I think it's part nine now of the old barn I didn't think it would actually take us nine or ten or however long but we've spent time looking at all the details of everything so for absolute beginners which I'd like to bring along with us on this journey I think that they can have a good bash at this and get something that they're going to be really proud of I've I've really enjoyed this. It's been one of the paintings I've enjoyed doing more than probably any other in my life even, I would say. it's um, It's got this lovely sort of central region, which which is all orangey and autumny and, uh, you know, the, the autumn colours on the tree and the oranges of the rusts in the in the old barn. The oranges just, just where this, these trees are starting to turn and the colours catching it. So all we've got to do really is finish this side of the box car in and then some detail on the grass now the grass the details on it are pretty much up to you you can spend hours and hours and hours on it or you can just have a quick flick over it and it'll be done in half an hour but the first thing i'm going to do today is just um mark this the bottom see here it's in shadow the box car is casting a shadow just onto this bit here so I just want to mark that out um, first. I've taken my reference off off the side where I normally have it because I thought I'd kind of finished with it, but it doesn't matter. It'll go on. I can see where it's supposed to go, like that. Um, some Sorrel would be very useful. Right, and we're just going <clears> to <throat> mark that out. It's obviously just something in the box car that's casting the shadow. We're not sure what it is, but it's definitely there. So, we'll put it in. And that's it. I've put it in in yellow. Um, I appreciate that you won't be able to see that, and I'm sorry. But I didn't want to put it in anything too dramatic uh, that was going to uh, show through the painting. So I'm just going to pop that in first because then when we come back to do the grass, um, we put the grass in over that. So for that, I'm just going to use a bit of I'm going to use a bit of raw umber and burnt umber mixed together because it's dark but it's not that dark so that's just a little bit of raw umber and this is just burnt umber amazing how much more raw umber I use than burnt umber apparently that's fine we'll just wait not sure where that went flying to thank you Mr fix it It's funny when I started doing all these recent lot of recent crop of paintings, I bought all that all the new scenarios. Do you remember all these pouches that I showed you? And now they're some of them are really really thin. <laughs> so uh, I have to see what I'm going to replace those with. Whether to replace them with scenario or something a little different. Uh, just as a an aside here. I noticed that Jackson's Art in the UK, uh, big art suppliers online, and I think they have a couple of shops, but online certainly, and I always have a link to them on my Facebook page, but I've noticed that there's, they've started to sell the Matisse paints, which are the ones that uh, Ginger Cook uses, so if you want to get yourself some of those, Jackson's have them. I'm on no commission from Jackson's, I am merely a public service telling you that Matisse are there. Frankly, I think after my buying all the golden opens, I wouldn't dare suggest to buy Matisse, but you might want them. So let's just mix this up. So we've got a dark brown, but not uh, not horribly dark. Perhaps a little bit more of the burnt umber than the, the raw umber, but pretty 50-50 really. We'll just pop that in there. I 
Mr. Fixit's been buying more kit, incidentally. If you're thinking that we're sounding like we're in your living room, please let that be the case. Then that's because Mr. Fixit. Yeah, yeah, he's bought this. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm some sort of Radio 1 disc jockey. I'd rather be Radio 4, actually. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be a Radio 4. For news presenter, I think. I think I could have that sort of voice. Read the news. Yeah, I think I could do it. You're probably too posh these days. Oh, isn't that awful when you hear people sort of in introducing programmes or whatever and the grammar's not right? Oh, that's so annoying. What are standards coming to? Mind you, having said that, this is uh, I'm painting this on the week of the Chelsea Flower Show, which in Britain uh, is a it's a big deal. It's there's uh, horticulturalists from all over the world, um, but mostly Britain um, present some a series of gardens that they've produced, they've designed, they've planted, they've sourced everything. And it's the creme de la creme of uh, horticultural people. Uh, and th the Queen goes every year. Um, and this year, what do you think? She turned up without a hat on. No hat. The Queen with no hat. So, yes, standards are slipping. I I'm, I'm appalled that she had no hat on. I can't believe I feel quite so strongly about it. But anyway, you know, that's that. She's obviously been advised that um, she'd get down with the kids better if she didn't have a hat on. Or maybe she's not interested about getting down with the kids. <laughs> she's 93. She's 93. She is an amazing person. And I hope she's got many, many, many more years left to go. But uh, if I'm still around when she does go, I know she would be a dreadful miss to, to everyone, really. I mean, I think the kids nowadays don't really see the benefit of royals. Maybe they just haven't had it explained to them, you know. They go around the world and do good, you know big contracts, selling contracts and all sorts of things. Not that they fix them up, but let's say they ease the way, should we? So, um, yeah, perhaps people need it explained just. And I love all the per the pomp and ceremony uh, that goes with, with that sort of thing. I'm just an old traditionalist, really. Are you Mr. Fix It? Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, when you uh, join the armed forces, you take a pledge of allegiance, if you like, to the Queen. To the Queen. And her heirs and successors. Her heirs and successors, yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes with the territory, really. Yeah, but I mean, you meant it, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'd, I'd definitely be a royalist. Yeah. Well, at the minute, being a parliamentarian's not that easy. Well, it's kind of it's kind of really tricky at the minute. So we're nearly there. Just uh, it'll just be easier for us if we put this bit in first and then it can be drying while we put the side bit in. The paint's drying very quickly today. I haven't got much of it out of course which always if it's thin it's, it dries more quickly. I'm just going to use this as a 
there's a mask for down there so I don't get pinned down there so okay that's uh, that's that bit done all right then the next thing to do is uh, put my brush in some water because it's really drying out is this side panel now for that I suggest that you use the reference that we lightened up because really there's virtually no details at all on on the original one it's just brown if you want to do that you know that that's fine if if you've had enough of details and stuff um it's basically just brown i'd add a little bit of purple down there maybe a little bit of raw sienna and and i think you'd be all right with that um however i'm going to make it more complicated for me um and i think it'll look nicer if you do put some more detail in so let's start with the top bit which has got some purple in it so this is strange that this has got so much purple in but it does so it's got purple it's got raw umber I might as well add that down there where I've already got some. Um, it's got a little bit of raw sienna. And a little bit of uh, titanium buff as well. I think that's probably about, about it really. Oh, this is getting very skinny, this one. This is the first one I think I'm going to have to replace, which um, must mean it's the one I use the most. I think I actually wasted quite a lot of this paint when I first had these because I wasn't expecting so much paint to come out when I press them, when I squeeze them. Um, so I have wasted quite a lot. But I mean, considering these at Jackson's, I think these are, are they three pounds at Jackson's? 363 pounds uh, three pounds three pounds uh, maybe even 280 i think on occasion oh right okay and it's 120 mil and they're v they're really good paints i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't say that if i didn't think they were but for the for what they cost i don't think you can pr i haven't tried anything that you could beat them with um and for 260 you can afford to get quite a few colors you know which helps it always helps Right, so let's use uh, the half inch angle brush, which as you know, you've been following me. Mine, I still haven't replaced it and it's still a bit dodgy, but you know, I'll get there. I don't really want to lean on that because it's wet. So what we're going to do, we'll put that there, shall I? Yeah, right. Talking to myself here, so don't worry. Uh, just before I start with these, I'm just going to spray them. It's a warm day here today. Summer has arrived. Please let it stay. So it's down. This is a fairly straight edge down here. And along the bottom. Oops. That's really, uh, it fades into purple actually. Oh, there's quite a line along here, quite a dark line along here. Um, and it does go straight back that, like that. Okay, and there's a section here which is very dark which is where the um, bolts, I think they're bolts, we call them bolts, are on there. I'll just put this in as a base. 
first. I don't think we need any darker than this. If we do, we'll mix some black into it. Um, but I think that might be all right. I'm just putting the darks in where where it really, really is dark. All along there is quite dark as well. Oh, it's stuck my hand in there, I think. So I'm just going to start to mix some purple into that um, because it's definitely got a purple hue, but it's not pure purple. So it's a mixture now of the raw umber and purple, which um, I think we've used before. Thank you. That's Mr. Fix it. Just get me a drink. Lemonade in case you're ima imagining something exotic. We don't much go in for the alcoholic types of drinks in this house. We just don't like them. I just don't know how people drink beer. It tastes horrible. But you know, it is not for me to wonder why. I'm just going to nip my brush out now and I'm just going to put some... Um, I'm going to mix some raw sienna and some titanium buff together. Try and get some lights in first. So there's one along here. And along here. It doesn't matter that it's catching in with those darks, that's fine. It's just all sort of melding together, which is quite nice actually. Mix up another little bit. There's just some sort of odd lines of grain in really in it. We just want to catch because they look quite attractive. And it gives it some some interest and some texture. And just break that hard edge down there. Hard edges are never good. Unless you want a hard edge, of course, <laughs> then it's good. Right, so back to the purple. And I'm just going to mix that through that the mixture of uh, raw sienna, just add a little bit more raw sienna to that. So we've just got this purpley hue. Actually, I need to darken that down a little bit. I'm going to have to add a little bit of raw umber to that. So I've now got a mixture of actually all of these four colours. Not enough purple in it though. That's fine. That's a good colour. So I'll just use this. Pleased with that, that's okay. A um, little bit more of the lighter mix on it, but then we need to put our bolts in. Don't forget the bolts, people. Just going to mix a little bit of a lighter colour. Add some in there. This is just kind of it, it's old wood. It's it's worn out old wood. Um, so yeah, I think that's I'm happy with that. It's looking all right. Um, so I need to put the bolts in, and they pretty much are well. They're a black and purple. That black. 
Yeah. I've got no glue protector on here, so I'm gonna gonna use it. Why not? Blacks are black. Just need a little bit. That is that is a really little bit. That's just being silly. There, not much I think will do. And while I've got that out, I might actually just go over the edges of here. Let me just have a drink for a minute. Wet my whistle, as they say up here. I don't know if they say that where you are. Exactly, you see. Wet your whistle and you can whistle. I'm just going to mark these in with um, pastel because I'm not exactly sure where they should go. So that comes up and it goes there. This paint's still wet, but I'll be able to. And then I come up there and there's one there. Come up there and there's one there. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay, let's go with that. So I've got my long uh, script. Actually, this is a new one. <laughs> uh, I'll just wet some of that black down as we've done a hundred times before. So it's more like ink consistency. I'll just go around the top part of these. Um, I keep forgetting what they call the blooming things. Bolts. That's it. Usain Bolt, remember that, Usain Bolt. Oh, this paint might be just a bit too wet for her there. I also think it's just a bit too far away. What size is this? Is this 16 by 16? I've just caught my microphone. Is it 16 by 16, this? Yes. Yeah, 16 inches, a bit too much to stretch across, I feel get any degree of accuracy that's what I'd say yeah that's looking how I want it to look A little bit of purple as well. I'm going to have to add a light colour to that purple or it's not going to stand out. It's too transparent on its own. I have to come back and give these a <coughs> Another coat, I think. Get that in now, and then it will just be literally another quick coat once they dry. I can't get, get it to lay any more paint down on that because the underneath paint's wet as well. So it's a bit... Just going to uh, rinse that one out, rinse, rinse your script or any of the little brushes out completely of paint, dry them off on your on your towel and, and leave them. Don't leave them in your pot of water, please, because you'll wreck them. I'm going to use my um, sword dagger. Uh, I've seen it called a strip liner as well. Uh, it's just one of these. Looks a bit like an angle shader, but it's longer. I showed it, sorry. Kipper. Kipper, yeah, Kipper. I'm just going to use some of this black just to do this outline here. This one, it's sharp. And along here. lovely that's grand I just wanted a little bit thicker than that on the bottom well on all of this corner so I'll use it um, broadside on really 
more than just just like that just put it in I'll just do a little bit like that okay same around the bottom I'm trying to avoid my sticking my finger in my bolt which are still wet That's lovely because that corner is sort of much darker. So now we've we've addressed that issue. Got to address your issues as they come across. Come up. Well, that's added much more interest to that that piece, I think. Yeah, let's finish that off nicely. Let's just have a check and make sure there's no black anywhere else. Well, it is very, very dark around those bolts. It really is. Um, so perhaps you will need a little bit of water with this brush. It's not a strong brush. It, it's probably more of a watercolor brush, really. But it does work if you uh, water down your paint just a wee bit. So I'll just put a little bit of, of black around here, like as if it was an, a knot. I'll deal with it as if it was a sort of knot in the timber. It's not a knot, but we'll deal with it as if it were. I mean, this is all detail that you don't have to put in if you don't want to. Let's feather that edge in a little bit, looking a bit sort of artificial. There we are, and the same around here. So when we come back to look at the bolts uh, and redo those, we'll have a look at this and see if we're, we're happy with it or um, if it needs some light put in with it or whatever. But I think we're alright with that so far. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Right. Uh, so going down down here, well, similar sort of thing really. It's very very dark. It's dark, it's kind of black. I mean, this is the lightened up version and that still looks black. And it's got a little sort of um, broken, worn piece about there. About there. So let's put a line down there and remember to leave a gap there for the, the bit that's that's broken. I'm actually not right on the line here. I'm going to have to go back and put another line. So it comes down to there and then it picks up again here. convinced I am exactly on that outside line there so I'll just do that again you can if you want to put a piece of masking tape up there make everybody's life much more easy much easier in fact but um, I kind of like making my life difficult so <laughs> that's very wobbly the bit that I've just put in it's kind of like too wobbly for words. Oh no. No, no. It's just a paint on my towel that I then transferred to my painting. That's grand. 
that's the way to get rid of extraneous bits of paint but do it instantly do it as soon as you make the boo-boo otherwise oh it's not black now oh yeah i forgot it was a liquitex one um if you leave it to dry you can if you use nail varnish remover on a cotton bud you just about can get it off but the problem is it takes everything back down to the canvas so try if you if you do do something wrong make an error a boo-boo in any way um try and get it off instantly if you can so let's have another go at this then As Mr. Fixer was just saying, it is an old wooden thing, so I'm not, you know, I'm not desperate to get it absolutely, absolutely straight. Straight enough is near enough on this occasion. Not always the occasion, not always uh, the fact, case. And if it was the case that I needed it dead straight, I would put masking uh, tape down or painters tape. Uh, I absolutely would. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not cheating. Just I like testing myself from time to time and see if I can paint a straight line. This one I think is pretty okay. I'll just draw that little paint that little catch in it there. So there we are, that's definitely good enough. There's also a dark bit down at the bottom here. Right there. That's quite thick. So that's the sort of the continuation of this piece of wood really. It's just got this, uh, I don't know, I think it's a closing mechanism actually, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a box car expert, and you know I know you'll be shocked by that. <laughs> so this has got quite a lot of dark in it, and and really dark lines. Um, I'm using black, and it's a rarity really when you use black. Try not to get these too straight, um, if you can. See this, the dagger brush needs water to work with acrylic. It's uh, it's too heavy to push on its own without it being watered down. Now that comes down to there. Um, and this is dark brown and there's uh, some pieces that go that way across. So is that all the black we need for the moment? some in this corner here okay and there's it's just some sort of lines down here. Like that. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is going to put some light uh, colours on. And I'm going to use my uh, quarter inch angle shader. Or well, would it if it was here? Um, where am I now? Looking? Here we are. Can't believe it's out of hand's reach. Um, right, so I'm just going to mix up some dark purpley shades. Um, so some purple, just similar to how we did it before. Some purple, that's a bit sticky there. Purple, raw umber bit of uh, raw sienna 
and a bit of that let's see what we've got is that purpley enough no i don't think so yeah that's good so that's a similar sort of mixture to we had before kind of all the colors really and it's this part here that is that we need to go back over it and, and add some details to it but let's just block it in for the time being so we can see where we're going don't want to be getting lost in this Remember that that comes up at that sort of angle there at the bottom. So there we are. Right. Um, there's quite a bit of this colour, and as soon as I've got it mixed and it's quite warm, I'm just going to carry on um, blocking this out with quite a lot of this colour. Um, and quite a lot of a, a darker version which for that I'll just add in some of this uh, raw umber that's here so it's all really a sort of mixture of of the purp the light lighter purple and the darker purple and then we'll come back over it and see um, see kind of what details we need to put in it really There will be some uh, some lighter parts, which have shown up only because we've lightened the the shadows in the picture. When it was at its original saturation, you didn't see anything. It's just really dark. And that and as I say, that might be fine. That might really be uh, what you're after. You might have had quite enough of all this detail malarkey because we've still got the grass to go yet which is which can be quite detailed this is this is beginning to show up quite nicely now so I'm just gonna uh, get rid of most of that paint on there pinch my brush out I'm gonna spray the purple mix that we've got to try and Hold it while we get these lighter colours in. And they start coming in from the top. So, and it just just come down. If you check this angle isn't exactly square so don't put your lines coming down uh, parallel to the edge because then the, the, they won't look right they need to be slight they need to be parallel to this edge not to the edge of the canvas so
nice mixture going on here of all these lights and darks. I'll put this on but we do need some dark over the top but we'll block it in with this first. And we'll put our darks over the top because it's looking lovely. Really like where this is all mixing. Really nice paint. Mix some more. It's like this over this hard line here. It's given us a more, much more interesting edge, which I like a lot. Not sure how faithfully I'm sticking to the uh, to the picture that we've got, but it's it's pleasing me. I like it. Of course, you can stick much more faithfully uh, if you want to. I mean, we have throughout all of our painting of this, you know, really stuck faithfully to it. So if you think I'm just going a bit doolally at the minute, just, you know, have a good look at your reference and stick to it. But this probably won't end up a million miles away from it. I'm just blocking in, blocking in my, my lights so I can come over with the darks, which is the opposite to what we did on the other side. We blocked in with the darks. And we came over with the lights but you know this is acrylics and you can do it either way that's the joy of it you know it's not like watercolors um which are much much more restricted than this just want to do that bottom bit as well i don't want to forget about that Yeah, it's looking really nice. This little bottom bit here, which is pretty much um, raw sienna. And it sort of pulls that line there. So we're all right. Yep, yeah, we're inside. We're inside that line. And we can come back later on and put the details on that. But I think that's looking sterling it's looking sterling i'm just gonna have a pause for a minute while i i just have a drink because i'm really really dry uh i'll be back in a second Hi, sorry about that. It's just, uh, as I say, it's really quite warm here today. So I'm um, back to my half inch uh, angle shader. And we'll put some darks over this. I really like that over over this uh, ed side of the old barn. Right. So I'm running out of colours here, so I'm probably going to have to put some more out. I'll leave that in case I don't need it, but I haven't got any. Uh, burnt sienna left I've got a little bit of purple so I'll see how I get on with that so I'm just going to mix some um, some burnt and some raw sienna as we did before this is I'm mixing this over where the purple was mixed and I'm, that's fine I'm all right with that because there is a, a purpley hue to really pretty much all of this and then it just sort of, it just kind of comes down. OK, 
kind of, I imagine, the planks. Um, I could be wrong, but I imagine that. And I'm pretty much dry brushing in parts just to get some texture on on there. And I like that, that's good. Um, so that's now dried up. So I'm just going to add a bit of raw sien sienna into that. Just going to give me a mid mid tone brown uh, and put another plank in. Like that. Wipe off most of my paint that's on there and just pretty much dry brush that. Doesn't really matter if you go over onto this side because we're coming over in a minute anyway to uh, let's put another plank in. Now the paint underneath this isn't dry so it's not behaving really 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 well but I still like the effect that we're getting I still like that and then I think we probably want one with a bit of purple in it really a bit more raw sienna maybe a touch more purple and a touch more raw sienna. Yeah, I think that's nice. That's going to do me. Right, so that's that dry brush from top to bottom. It's a gorgeous texture. Looks lovely to me. And the very edge is very dark anyway so I think maybe we need a bit of texture on this but pretty much we're about there so I'm going to take a little bit of this black and just a little bit mix it through this mix mix the black in very steadily because it can really soon swamp your color um, and then you know you're just left with black you might not you might as well not have mixed anything So bit by bit mix it. Yeah, I think that's maybe a tad more. Yeah, that's dark enough there now. So it's just really this. Um, actually, I need a, a quarter inch. My half inch is too big. It's all right. We'll just go. We're not washing this. This isn't a wash. It really is a dry brush. I'll we'll just darken it down, give it a bit more character. Might just need to be a little bit darker on the edge. I'm putting my brush on the edge and I'm pulling it in inwards. Once again, my brush is very, very dry. Just gives a bit more character to this old girl. Wonder if she's still standing up. Wonder if the barn is still standing up. I've no idea when the photograph was taken. Um, 
but I do intend to write a thank you to Mr. Flash Buddy for taking the photograph in the first place and allowing us to uh, to have it to play with because it's a really nice photograph. I'm so glad that we shared it. Okay, so how are we looking? I think we're looking not too bad. Maybe a bit of a dark down here. There's a bit of darkness. Okay, so let's go back to our bolts now and see, oh, I can see from here that the black is too, too black. I need a, <clears throat> I need to just bring that, soften that edge there of that black, like that with a, with that black mixture that we've just been using. Make it not look quite so stark. That's much better. So with acrylics, really, I'm sure you've got the hang of now. It's a lot of back and forward, a lot of putting your darks in, putting your lights in, put, reinstating some of your darks, reinstating some of your lights. There's an awful lot of back and forward. Um, but it's great that acrylics let you do that. So, you, you know, at the end, you should be really happy with what you've got. Now, right down this edge here is very dark, which I think might have been what I was trying to mix up the first time when I mixed a dark and then I forgot all about it. Um, yeah, that's nice and dark there. So let's put this in just at the edge. I don't think it goes all the way down, it sort of peters out. Up there somewhere. Okay, bit of light here, and then it's a done deal, I'd say. Don't forget the bolts. Don't forget the bolts. So let's pick up a bit of that. See if that's going to allow us to get in there light enough. Yeah, that's fine. It's light enough, I think. Actually, it might be slightly better if we mix some of that in with it. You always get to this stage and, and you just don't want to put out any more paints. And so you it's, it's try and scrub off every last bit that there is. By which stage it's gone really tacky and you can't paint with it anyway. But, you know, it saves you the, that huge effort of putting paint out, which isn't a huge effort at all. In a minute, Mr. Fixer, I'm just going to ask you if you can zoom in so as we can see some of the, the detail, the dry brush detail here. If that's all right with you? Of course. You need to reposition. I may reposition. I can reposition. And this just needs dry brushing across there. Dry brushing is a really, really good technique. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Right. So any of this sort of part here where, where there's dry but this this is a nice part. Drop yeah, in. there we are. Put it on the table. Move that I, I can't really. Can we not just hold it up there? Yes, but don't get quite so close. Huh. Is that all right? Yeah, that's all right. So you can see the texture that we've achieved on this plank, which was when we just put some paint on, started at the top, and dragged it all the way down. And it's just given that lovely irregular texture where it's caught on the canvas. And then this one. Is different again but dry brushing again and then this one this lighter one we've just put in and this has got this darker um, this solid sort of line here which is what it is but then we've dry brushed that in so you can see well I hope you can see that dry brushing for this sort of finish is really 
it's good right let's move on thanks mr fixer just wanted to show that so people know what i'm talking about you're welcome so we need to sort of uh smarten this up i'm not overly keen on the way it was left so i'm going to get some ooh, drippy brush i'm going to get some of this light some of the raw sienna mix it together take most of it off my brush more than that that much and just i'm just going to drag this along it's the same kind of technique well it is the same technique it's dry brushing so there's nothing secretive about it it's dry brushing and it just i think for wood in particular um it gives a really really just that technique you know just perfect so there we are i think that's probably all that needs really just meld some colors into others i like this flash of light along here very much and i think there's a flash that comes across this bolt as well so we'll put that in fairly solid um, and that's pretty much it apart from the bolts so the bolts the bolts the bolts where's my little script there's a script on here just about right so let's take some of this purple that we've got that's still alive some of this new uh, titanium buff that we've just put out um just give them a little bit of a mix i need some water on that and that's that is really purple <laughs> that's lovely so i'll just put that round round there Okay, there we are. We'll need some black just to go around the outside of that. Black's starting to get all sticky and tacky, but never mind. We'll pick some of that up and we'll go around this, around this purple just to give it a bit of a definition. I think we also need just a bit of the titanium buff on its own just to add a little bit of a highlight to these so there we are clean your script out in your water rinse it on your towel nip it on your towel and leave it like that okay let's have a look and see what we need to be doing now so really it's just uh this thing which is pretty featureless um let me get my ruler and we'll square up square up where we're supposed to be going we're supposed to be following that line there so um Just draw that in with pastel with very 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 little of this bottom part but it's there you know so it's details like that that really make a difference so i'm going to i'm going to block this in first uh, and then we'll look at the details of that so i'll just use my uh, th half inch or three eighths inch whatever it is half inch i think angle shader and i'm going to use that mixture again of um raw and burnt umber and it, it, it literally is blocking it in it's getting quite sticky my paint actually
that's that's just water that I'm spraying it with incidentally I don't think I can actually get close enough to the line with this brush. It's just a bit too old. But that's kind of the edge. I'll fill the middle bit in. And then I'll use my dagger sword striper to do the edges. don't want to have to put all new paint on just the rest of it it really is getting very very tacky I'm really struggling. I'm going to have to put more paint in. It's just madness. <laughs> just do it. So a new mixture of raw and burnt umber, I'm going to fill this in, block it in and come back and detail it once we've got a really good edge on it. Um, and this little bit here needs a bit of loving really been a bit neglected so we'll just use that same well I'll, I'll use more of the um, roll but with a little bit of burnt umber in it I'm just going to put these lines in that we need to represent the bottom of this piece here um, knock your paint off just pull that across a little bit so we're dry brushing it using the paint that we had on had on there like that so there I think that's that's pretty all right okay so the other the only other thing that we need to complete the covering the entire canvas is this little bit here um, and so it would be remiss of me not to cover that um, because then we can have a little mini celebration and a dance if you want you can dance if you want um, we'll just fill this bit in here and block this in that bit there is quite dark it's quite a dark section comes across here uh, and at the bottom of there and the rest is quite light uh, and just mix uh, the raw sienna with the titanium buff again and put that in there 
that's nice because it's just all mixing in with the mixture we just put down. It's nice, but I don't want it to all mix away. I'll put some more just there. It's hard to make out exactly what this is. I mean, it's just something is what it is. It's something. Okay, so that's that's all right. Now, what we have to remember when we come to do the grass actually is that this has got little sort of bits you see these little bits that go into it um I, I suspect as i say it's something to do with shutting locking something like that but we don't need to consider those at the moment they'll come when we do the grass um because the the green obviously um so all we need now really is some little lighter flex in here and that's we're pretty much done with this side so let's mix up a I'll take some of that and put that through our mixture of, of all sienna and unbleached titanium or yeah it's not unbleached titanium titanium buff this seems to have a series of little holes in it there yeah. And there's just there's just some marks in it, but you know they're not really anything. There's nothing to get your teeth into with this one, I don't think. I'm really not seeing much more, to be honest. Let's. That's what I like bit there, so I'll make it into a thing. Uh, let's clean our brushes off and then just set that down into the into the painting. Like so. Everything here is wet. The back's wet. The bits that we've just put on is wet, so it's melding quite, quite readily. It's a bit like doing clouds, actually. You can do this. You can do clouds. For sure. I mean, that doesn't look very exciting, but. That is what it is. Uh, here I've just taken off rather too much paint in my enthusiastic tamping down. I'm just going to put a bit more back in. Okay, that's fine. So I think once we get the teeth sort of in there, I think we'll be all right. Uh, I'm going to use my dagger just to outline outline this and I think it needs outlined in black see if I can find some black that's still alive not so much really yes once you get a skin on paint there's no there's no coming back from it you can't dissolve the skin it's just gone it's dead so let's so I've got quite a lot of water on this brush anyway it's been standing in water which it shouldn't have been but it has so I've got quite a lot of it's a damp brush so let's just um, I'm going to do this edge first so it's easier for me I'm going to have to turn it round to get the other lines in.
place this one on the top there. You're doing all right, Mr. Fix It. I'm sitting out. Just say it, please. Just down that bit that you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's a little viewpoint. You can just see the top edge. It's uh, all right. got the sun on it. Okay. There's a little tutorial for you. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that might be a little bit more. Yeah, 3D ness. Right, let's put that in there. That looks, it's looking like it's a very light colour because the sun's reflecting off it. Yeah, very light colour. So we'll put that in with that then. Try not to touch that black I've just put in. I'm squashing my dagger down just to give it a bit started with it on the on the toe as I'm coming back I'm pressing it down just to give us a bit of thickness on that line I think that's I think that's it yeah that's what you meant yeah yeah makes it stand out gives a bit of 3d-ness okay well I had hoped that we'd get onto the grass today really sorry guys time just vanishes um, but we have got a really rather nice side to our box car. So every little bit of canvas is now now covered. Great achievement. I'm not overly convinced I like this very much. I might um might invent some details for that. It just looks a bit yeah, maybe a bit of dry brushing, the same as the other side, just to Yeah, liven it up a bit. It hasn't got any detail in it. No. Nibbles on the end. I said I'm going to do them in green. Yeah, I, I, I'd invent some. I'm going to, yeah, it doesn't sit right, does it? It doesn't look woody like the rest of it. I don't, that's the thing, I don't think it is woody. No. I think it's metal, which is why it hasn't got any grain or anything in it. I think it's like a metal lock sort of thing, but it's going woody, people, because I don't like it. Artistic license. Yeah, definitely. So I'm going to use some sort of mixture. That's the burnt umber, titanium white, and the raw sienna. And you know, let's just see. Let's just see what what happens. Might actually add a little bit of purple if I've got some left. Um, yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that colour. I don't know, you know, it'll sit well against what we've got. So yeah, this is pure artistic license. I just don't like what we've got, so leaves probably aren't dry yet. No. Dry enough. Look at that. I definitely think this looks more interesting. Just it just did not look right. Okay, let's leave that like that and add a bit of um light into it somewhere like we've got down here. So we'll need some of that and the last little bit of that. And 
just put a little bit in. So I'm just choosing my place really, it's not, um, it's just the way I think it could do with it. So this is kind of listening to what your picture is telling you that it needs. Um, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes a photograph just doesn't translate exactly into a painting. Sometimes you've got to um, take control of the situation and make it force its hand to become a good painting. And I think this is one of these occasions. I think that's much, much better. Really don't have any raw sienna left. So with our standard mixture of titanium white and raw sienna, let's just knock off some of that paint onto there. Let's just come in and add some features to it. Same thing on the bottom. Oh good, I, th I think that's, that's probably, probably enough. And you could go on dry brushing further in the day, really, couldn't you? I was wondering the situation where it's best to put it on the mantelpiece and let it dry. Best to put it on the mantelpiece and let it dry. I do that often. Right, I'm just going to reinstate these little, I don't know, I think they're screw heads or something. In my mind they are. They're going on anyway. Uh, I think, I think we're all right. I quite like that actually now it's just beginning to sit down it, it's looking all right and this which I had my worries about as well if you can see there that's looking okay and I really like this happy with that okay so that's going on the mantelpiece I'm going on the settee Mr Fix it's going to produce this so you can see it um, and then I'm going to think about my tea which I can tell you now is chicken, lime and chilli kebabs with salad. Sounds delish, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, I'll catch you soon. Happy painting. Thanks for joining. Bye. Me and the boys were sitting around drinking. We was talking about things that we was thinking. When all of a sudden, what comes out of Bill's mouth? Said I'm getting old and fat and slow and I don't recover like I did before from night's arrival, rousing and too much fun. Well, I looked around, we all agreed, and I had a drink and I ordered three and I staggered back to do it all again. Then we made an oath on a rum and coke with the best intention, I'm sure you know, that we would stop this living in excess. We're gonna have one more party, one more special occasion. Now 